Maggie Bat, and I thought it would be a good day to do an acquisitions video. Um, it is uh, day two of Essence Spiel out in Germany, and I am in Seattle, Washington with an impending windstorm and some craziness. But uh, it is about two or three weeks before I start seeing some fabulous, awesome, heavy euros dropping at my feet. And so I thought I might show you some of the goofier stuff I've gotten in lately, which is kind of cool. Um, it's that time of year where it's not the family stuff and it's not the heavy euros, but it's all this like weird, light, funky stuff that I tend to like comes out. So I'm excited. And um, first I'll start with the one where you might have heard of the game before, so Push and Explosion from Cool Mini or Not. Um, really simple, cool, if Bejeweled was a board game, it would be this. And it's just so well done and wonderful and easy to teach and accessible and gorgeous. Push and Explosion is really special and I played it a couple years ago at Essen, Essen Spiel and then at Sasquatch again. And I didn't think much of it, I just thought, oh that one was pretty cool. But then it kind of kept in my head, and the more I talked about it, the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to own a copy. So I bought my own copy. And then fabulous Chris Urenko from Daft Concepts decided to make custom printed or laser cut uh, wooden potion explosion boxes. So it's all messed up because I'm trying to show it off for the camera, but this is a beautifully stained version and you take out your marble and you let the things clack and it's just su super fun and wonderful. Um, next I probably go find custom marbles because uh, I fear it's something not super expensive that could really have an impact on the coloring of my game. Um, next, this one was a Kickstarter purchase that I wasn't super positive on. It was between this and Princess of the Renaissance and I'm surprised that this one won over um, what what I've known for a long time is a really heavy um, sought after game but there was something about Mi Tierra Nueva Era so this is the new version of Mi Tierra and it's kind of a family weight worker placement game with some beautiful art. Um, I really like it and it would be one of the only Spanish language games that I owned because I don't have a lot of things from Spain. Um, unfortunately the back of the box doesn't tell you a whole lot. It's a very kind of old school approach with a real picture of people and some giant writing. Um, I much prefer what most games do now is a picture of the game and some information about how it works. Um, so that's okay. Uh, I look forward to playing it. Uh, a friend of mine out here in Seattle, Jonathan, just told me that he has the original, so he's looking forward to seeing what I think of this one. Um, at some point I might try and play both, if, especially if I like it. Uh, the last one I picked up today uh, was um, is Four Gods. Um, this is from Ludicali. Ludicali? Ludicali? <laughs> it's from Asmodee of some sort. Um, Four Gods is uh, Christopher Bollinger. Uh, he did Archipelago uh, a couple years back. Now, Archipelago I thought was a fabulous game. It's worker placement, it was resource management, it was really fun, like this weird semi-co-op thing. Um, it fell a little flat for me on some things, the semi-co-op nature of it. Um, unless you had incentives for people to help others, it always fell to people like me who would help out the rest of the group. And so whomever didn't want to do that didn't have to spend their resources. And I didn't like that there was a traitor element in a game where you could lose pretty easily. But honestly, the theme was just, oh man, the green Christianity so you could prevent the uprisings. Oof. So I've been looking forward to another one of his designs because it would give me a better idea of what kind of designer he is. Now, Four Ads is lighter than Archipelago, because that, I mean, Archipelago is about as rules heavy as you're going to get for a medium euro. Four Gods is a real-time tile laying, kind of like a smash-up of Galaxy Checker and Carcassonne, because at any time you need to have tiles in both hands, or if you have a hand free, you can take a couple other actions to flip things or draw things out of bags. Um, if you, or if you want to draw out of the bag, you have to have both hands free. Um, 
and at some point during the, the round, you will invoke a god, and in order to invoke the god, you take the little tile, and they're rivalrous, so you can, you can have one, and then no one else can have that same one. And as soon as you invoke your god, you can place your little meeples out on tiles as you place them to score points. So that's where the carcass and comparison comes in. This is all real time, and you're kind of building from this frame on inward. And it's a really short play time, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Galaxy Trekker is not my favorite. I love building my ship, but I really hate rolling dice at it for a half hour afterward. And I've played a little of the expansion, and I've played where you can you know, look at the cards that are upcoming and kind of build to prevent that, but that's still not fun for me. So time and space has always been my favorite real time so far, but I, I love the idea of real time. <laughs> Probably more than the actual amount of games that I've played of it. Um, second to last. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to spend that goofy money. It's, you know, a new lipstick, a new hat or whatever. Uh, I tend to do that with goofy card games by sweeping individuals, uh, and that is telepathic training wheels. Uh, so this was a man who printed this game as a passion project a long while ago, and finally he just wanted to sell it, so he put his game on Kickstarter, maybe $9 a deck, they're these like circle cut cards. Can you hear that outside? Oh my goodness. Uh, there's giant windstorms, everyone's driving like a maniac outside. So, telepathic, um, <laughs> no, I'm just mixing up the name. Telepathic Training Wheels uh, is a two-player kind of war. So everyone's going to have cards in their hand, and you're going to play two cards, and you're just going to try and win. Um, they have found that the color patterns and um, whatever else in the game will tend to make one person better at the game than others, even though it's war, right? It's somewhat random. Um, I love the idea that they're trying to use colors and patterns to manipulate the psychology of the game and try and tell you whether or not some people are inherently better at reading others. Um, but honestly, it's just a goofy little something to do. Uh, I do know one other person backed it in, in my Kickstarter friendship activity line thing, um, and I hope to bring it to BGGCon and just give it a good go, because I don't really have anyone in my life that I would play that with right now, but um, it's certainly goofy enough. I, I love that, and I mean, he individually numbered them, and they've just been sitting out in his cabin. It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, you, the games, uh, especially on Kickstarter, they get kind of cold, they get manufactured, and they all look the same, and they all act the same, and they all fund the same, and they all come from the same manufacturer. So sometimes you just have to back something different. Um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I should probably throw my money into a savings account instead of doing that. But if you're going to waste your money anyway, you might as well waste it on someone's dream. Um, and the last one arrived this evening when I got home from work, and I'm super excited because I heard that they've had a very successful... Day, uh, day two of Essence Beal, and they have sold out. Um, and so that is No Ideas, The Flow of History. Uh, this is a Jesse Lee design. It's kind of a Civ game. Um, well, not kind of. It is a Civ game. Uh, it's got a beautiful cover, and the rule book uses the exact same art as the cover. Um, the rule book is really giant for such a simple looking game. Um, the game itself is mostly just these cards. Um, so there's a deck and um, there's different eras on the backs of the cards, but the cards themselves are rather muted, so the game is not going to be super gorgeous on the table. Um, I look forward to trying it out. Jesse Lee did Ponzi Scheme, and I am always looking for a Civ game I might like, because I've yet to like one. <laughs> I will someday like a Civ game. I mean, Through the Ages is okay, but it's way too long. Uh, Clash of Cultures is okay, but it's way too random. I, I like the idea of a lot of Civ games, but I've yet to find one that really, really just does it for me. Um, I will have another five tons of games coming in really soon. Solarius Mission should be here any day. Avi Rama should be here in a couple weeks. 
Um, my beautiful, beautiful friends are at Essence Field picking up a couple games for me. So I should have Railroad Revolution from What's Your Game, uh, Honshu, Capital Lux, and The Mask of Anubis because I needed something goofy to do during the Extra Life stream. Um, so for Extra Life, I guess I should give you an update. Uh, November 5th, there's going to be a stream. It's twitch.tv slash card kingdom. Um, that will be 24 hours. Uh, myself and Steph, uh, Steph's draw are there 24 hours trying to raise money for the kids. Uh, we will be joined by Suze and Bebo. They may not be there for the whole 24 hours just because they have lives and children and stuff. Uh, we'll have Aaron Dunna that I work with. He goes by Sarks online or NBC Aaron for a long time and now he's got a new Twitter handle and I can't remember what it is. And some friends of ours. And we will be streaming, so twitch.tv slash card kingdoms, join us. Uh, I've got my onesie all set, so if I hit $1,000, I have to put on a onesie for the rest of the 24 hours. Right now I'm sitting at about 700 bucks. I will do one or two more big pushes right before then to see if I can't spend the whole 24 hours in my brand new onesie. Um, this time around, uh, we will be doing all kinds of fun things, but the Mask of Anubis was the game that I bought specifically for the Extra Life stream because it is goofy as hell and it's going to take some money for some charity to get me into a VR mask, especially live on stream. Uh, but the VR mask is shaped like an Anubis head, so it's a little puppy, and, um, you look through it and around it and you're trying to describe to people how to put the little cardboard maze chit things and it's pretty neat um so that's your reminder of extra life november 5th um straight after that i will be at bgg con so please let's do an update between now and then i will do another update about bgg con i'm gonna try and do some sort of meeple included meetup um meeple's included if you don't know is my website uh it is a collaboration between myself and a lot of other people and um, due to life and stuff, it didn't get quite the love and time it deserved this year, even though I have the wonderful Nutters plays kind of holding it up on one end and Games on the Rocks holding it up on another. Um, Meeple's Included is a very important thing to me, and I hope to support it more soon. Um, but if you'd like, you can meet up with us there and get some buttons, and we should have a lot more content coming out for that soon. That's all for me for now, and I will see y'all next time.